I think it's now time that we all accept that the cost cap has done more harm to F1 than it has good, and that it just fundamentally does not belong in the world's most expensive sport. There are three reasons why the cost cap should not remain in Formula One. The first reason is that it makes it impossible for the trailing teams behind to catch up, as all the teams are constrained to a maximum spending cap. So there isn't the possibility to make relative gains in performance by possibly spending more. The second reason is that it is just fundamentally too complex and obscure for the FIA to govern and make sure that all of the teams are abiding by the cap without them doing anything dodgy in their accounting. And the final reason is that its attempts to allow the smaller teams behind to close the gap on the teams ahead doesn't work, as the bigger teams will still have the best infrastructure and organizational pull to recruit top talent and sustain their advantage as being top of the rest. Regarding the first point, which is that it makes it virtually impossible for the trailing teams behind to catch up, I think that this is pretty much self-explanatory and doesn't really need much explaining. If a team such as Ferrari has a car that is five tenths a lap on average slower than that of the Red Bull, and they want to make up that performance deficit, how on earth can they do so if both Ferrari and Red Bull are constrained to the same budget? If Ferrari brings an upgrade, so will Red Bull, and if anything, all the cost cap does is just neutralizes the performance deltas between the teams and ensures that the team that nailed the regs at the very beginning of its introduction just maintains their advantage over the others. Therefore, if a cost cap is to remain in F1, it should instead be a sliding scale cost cap that allows the teams lower down to spend more money. Regarding the second point, which is that the cost cap is just too complex to effectively manage by the governing body, the issue regarding this is that teams will always find grey areas to try and exploit and manipulate the balance sheet in their advantage. Examples of this which have been previously rumoured seems to all stem with Red Bull, and how they supposedly don't sign their top employees that should fall under the cost cap to the Red Bull Racing Organization itself, but that they instead sign them to the main Red Bull company, and that they then outsource them to the Red Bull Racing team and other projects in a way to cut down costs on the budget cap. The biggest rumored example of this is with Adrian Newey, as he is currently working part-time in F1, and he is also working part-time with the RB17 Hyper Project by Red Bull, as he only supposedly works part-time. This means that Red Bull Racing do not have to pay him 100% of his salary, that other teams might have to pay their full-time chief technical officers, as the rest of Newey's contract is most likely paid by those who operate the RB17 hypercar project. So to summarize this somewhat complicated point, teams will just look to exploit the cost cap, so its integrity will always be questioned. And lastly, the final reason why the cost cap won't work is simply that the biggest teams will always have the best infrastructure and organizational pull to attract the smartest brains in the Formula One sphere, so they'll always maintain their advantage. At the beginning of the cost cap's introduction, the infrastructure was totally included within the cost cap, meaning that lower teams such as Williams or Haas, who most likely didn't have basic facilities to compete, couldn't upgrade them. However, while the FIA has now allowed teams to spend between 6 and 20 million extra in this department, it still isn't enough for them to compete at the front anytime soon. And while they lack the vital infrastructure needed to improve, they just cannot compete near the front of the grid. Likewise, the organizational pull of teams such as Ferrari or Red Bull will always enable them to poach the best engineers and technical minds that lower teams simply can't do. So while the cost cap might seem like a good idea in theory, it is unrealistic in its application. Also, the whole idea of the cost cap in relation to the current state of the sport is so counterintuitive. F1 is supposedly in a state where it is growing, how it is making record profits annually, and the sport has not been shy in charging both the race organizers and fans extortionate prices in order to host and watch the races. Yet, despite this, in a time where the sport is getting richer and richer, they now want to restrict the amount that teams can spend to develop the car. It's honestly stupid.